Hello Beckman Patriots. This is a video lecture of the scientific method. In this video, I will provide a brief introduction to the scientific method, review the steps of the, of the scientific method, and give you two examples of using the scientific method. All right, here we go. Right, first off, uh, I want to start off by saying that throughout our history, science has become a dominant force in modern society. As we've discussed in class, Discoveries made by scientists have reshaped the world we look at. Um, research has led to technolo technological breakthroughs that have put men and women in space. Uh, research has cured deadly diseases. And science has ultimately made life easier for all of us. Over time, people have developed an, and, um, an, an outstanding procedure for uncovering the secrets of nature. And this is called the scientific method. So quickly, I'm going to go over the steps of the scientific method. I have an A through G format, as you can see here on the screen. The first step is to ask a question. And um, a short definition of that is just pretty much, what is the problem that you want solved? So examples could be, why won't my car start? Which one of these solutions will aquatic shrimp thrive the best in? Which one of these materials is the best at containing heat? Where does rain come from? Where did I leave my wallet? <laughs> so all of these are questions um, or problems that you want solved. Uh, next would be background research, as you can see, B. So ultimately, background research is just completing as much background research as possible to help you solve your question or problem. Next, you will construct a hypothesis. A, a, a hypothesis is a proposed statement, explanation, or pretty much educated guess that, will, that you will test through your study and, and investigation. Um, this is the way that scientists try to answer their questions. Usually hypothesis come in the form of if and then statements. Next, you're going to design and perform an experiment. So pretty much using what you know, um, you will now construct and perform an experiment to either prove or disprove your hypothesis. And in doing so, this is where you will gather materials, observe, and record data, and take measurements um, and identify a single test variable. After you do that, you're going to evaluate and communicate your results. Uh, this is just a way to explain, interpret, and communicate your data. Uh, so you really want to use this step to take a look at what is your data telling you? The next step is to formulate a conclusion. So if everything worked out well, the conclusion is a summary of the research and the results of the experiment. So this is where your, uh, you answer your, re your research question originally. Uh, you will then make a statement of whether your data is supported by your hypothesis or not. And if needed, um, and if either your hypothesis or your experiment was wrong, um, you will generate a new hypothesis or experiment. And this is if you need it. Um, and this last stage um, is only part of the scientific process if your experiment didn't work and or your hypothesis was rejected. If your, if your experiment did not work, this is where you create a new experiment. If your, if your original hypothesis was rejected, then this is where you would create a new hypothesis. So here's an easy example of the scientific method that can be relevant to life. Um, the question I have here is, why doesn't my car start? I want my car to start. Well, after I ask the question, I do some background research. Um, I would research common issues, how the engine works, how cars are fixed, and even inspect my own car. And then I'm going to construct a hypothesis. So here's my hypothesis for this example. If I put gas in my car, then it will start. So as you can see, here is how I've used my if-then statement. Um, if you want to go a little bit further, you could even say, if I put gas in my car, then it will start. And then you can add a because statement um, conjoined to that. Um, it would be, if I put gas in my car, then it will start, because all, gas or, or all cars need gas in order to start. Here's my design and um, 
or here, yeah, next is my design for my experiment. Uh, so here it is. I'm going to walk to the gas station. I'm going to purchase gas in a container. I'm going to walk back to my car. I'm going to fill my car up with gas, and then I'm going to start my engine. And as I evaluate my results on my first try, my car has started. Then I can formulate a conclusion saying that, hey, when my car has gas, it is able to start. And in this case, I do not need to generate a new hypothesis or experiment. Once again, this is a very elementary uh, example of the scientific method, but through this example, hopefully, you can see how we can use the scientific method. Here's another example, uh, a little bit more difficult, but here it is. Here's my question. So of these three drink containers, ceramic, paper, or styrofoam, which of these types of materials would, would keep my hot tea hot the longest? I love hot tea. Hot tea is a great way to um, just calm myself down and to just really um, enjoy. Um, after asking that question, I would then do some background research. And, and if you really think about it, most tea shops serve hot drinks in paper cups. Perhaps there's a sleeve, but ultimately the, the, uh, the cup is paper. In addition, coffee shops usually serve their hot drinks in paper cups too. So thus my a hypothesis can be, if hot tea is kept in three containers, ceramic, paper, and styrofoam, then the paper container will hold the heat in longer because it is, a, it is a better insulating material. Next, I will design and perform an experiment. So in doing so, I will put the three types of containers side by side, heat up some tea, heat up some tea, and pour equal amounts of hot tea water into each of the containers. I will, comp I will, re I will record the temperature at in, in, in each container at, at the very beginning to verify they are all the same. I will record the temperature again five minutes later and repeat this procedure until 20 minutes has passed. I will write down the measured temperatures of each container at the five minute interval and at the end of 20 minutes the experiment will be completed. So in doing so, after I've performed my experiment, I actually realized that of these three containers, um, we can see that after 20 minutes, the temperature of the ceramic mug was 110 degrees Fahrenheit, the paper cup was 112 degrees Fahrenheit, and the styrofoam was 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, interesting. So seeing that, our hypothesis is false. So I would need to go to my next step of formulating a new hypothesis. So here it is. Here's my new hypothesis. Um, if hot tea is kept in three containers, ceramic, paper, and styrofoam, then the styrofoam container will hold the heat in longer because it is a better insulating material. This time when I do background research, I'm going to research not just what I see, but I'm going to research um, which container is the better insulator. My design and performing of an experiment is going to be the same, and ultimately I'm going to reach the same results. And my conclusion will then be, styrofoam containers are better at insulating heat than ceramic and paper containers when filled with hot liquids. So thus, here is another example of how we've used the scientific method. So the reason the scientific method is, is, is pretty much outstanding is that when you use its steps to solve a problem, this procedure should work when repeated by anyone. So for these two examples, if I have proven that this has worked through the scientific method, then anyone who uses, or anyone who has this question in the future should be able to reach the same result as me. So what's amazing about the scientific method is that people no longer have to rely on someone else's authority since they can perform the same experiment and observe if they get the same results and draw the same conclusion. We have also seen that the scientific method forces the experimenter to explain and ask why he or she obtained their results. In this way, science continually advances by, asking, by the asking of new questions. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, um, or just thank you for taking the time to watch this video lecture. If you have any questions, 
please ask or email your instructor. Science is awesome.